theme song. I got a theme song. It's my theme song. Yeah. He trudged on alone until he came upon a man traveling toward him. The man was taller than average, thin, with bronzed, bronzed skin and shoulder length ebony curls. Does Megan Eli know how to write any other character than his skin was kind of tan and he had black curly hair? Because I haven't seen it so far. He had a strong jawline, warm brown eyes, and a swagger that couldn't be ignored. Ahoy, my good man! Come thee from the castle, the man called out. Indeed I do, Ahmad replied. Are the rumors true? Is the prince dead? What rumors? The king held an official press release. Though tis what they claim, I have my suspicions. How do you mean? Ahmad was reluctant to answer. Forgive me, but I'm not sure how much I should divulge. I know nothing of you. The stranger smiled at the boy's wariness. My name is Geoffrey, and I was once in the king and queen's employ. I assure you, my motives are pure. I believe I've heard your name spoken from time to time. I am Ahmad, son of Rainy. My mother was the prince's nanny when he was young, Ahmad explained. You said you and your sis you said you had your suspicions about the prince's death. How do you mean? I know we discovered this to Jeffrey, and I can do the Jeffrey voice, but like my throat's already kind of dry, and let's not let's not add that strain. Also, he's no longer slow and meandering, so maybe his voice sped the fuck up. Ahmad gave in, probably more quickly than he should have. I don't believe he's truly dead, sir. I'm off to find the truth as we speak. Leopold is my closest friend, and I have good reason to believe his death has been staged so his parents might avoid public humiliation. You don't have good reason. You literally have a hunch. That's not good reason. You have the opposite of good reason. Jeffrey looked perplexed. Public humiliation? Why would you be perplexed? You, you know a perfectly valid reason why they would be publicly humiliated. Again, unsure of how much he could say, Ahmad spoke hesitantly. Yes, sir, though I'm not sure it's appropriate to share the prince's secrets with a stranger. I shall commit to helping you find the prince if you rightly explain yourself, Geoffrey promised. Yes, said the stranger on the road. That seems trustworthy. Oh, good. He does doubt him. How do I know I can trust you? What knowledge and skills do you have to offer me? Well, I suppose you don't know if you can trust me, but you may as well get used to that. It's a big scary world out there, and you'll just have to follow your instinct about who you can and can't trust. As far as my skills and knowledge go, with age comes wisdom. I'm also reasonably well-traveled. I won't beg, though. Do you want my help or not? Ahmad struggled with the decision, but felt he couldn't turn down the man's offer. The king and queen called upon Leopold to start seeking his princess, but he confided in me that he intended to tell them that he had no interest in doing so. Why is that? Well, he prefers the company of other men. He was quite concerned with how they might take the news, but I suspect the conversation went every bit as badly as he feared. Ahmad's voice trembled. Maybe worse. That's all? I don't understand. So long as it's done properly, a little buggery never hurt anyone. I should know, Jeffrey laughed. You're a very peculiar man, aren't you? What? Jeffrey said unashamed. I've dabbled. There's nothing wrong with keeping an open mind. I still don't know what like peculiar is supposed to mean in the context of this story. Is it like... Being gay? Because they don't call Leopold peculiar. If they, they had a euphemism for gay, why not, instead of being all those, he prefers the company of other men, I prefer princes, why not just say, he's peculiar? Like, that's the point of euphemisms, so you don't have to say long-winded things like that. And I mean euphemism as an euphemism, not making Eli's version of euphemism, which is a metaphor.
I blush to say you're preaching to the choir, as it were. I share the prince's affinity for men. I just don't expect a stranger to be so unabashedly to so unabashedly announce his, um, dabbling, as you put it. Okay, so peculiar is a euphemism for gay, so why not use that euphemism that's established in this world that other people understand instead of saying, I'm partial to men, which is much longer and time-consuming to say. That's the fucking point of having euphemism. That's why we have the term gay. So we don't say, have to say, I'm a man attracted to other men. You can say, I'm gay. That's like the entire fucking point. Jeffrey puffed out his chest a bit. Well, I've never been a shy man. I see no reason to be ashamed of my life experiences. Ahmed sighed. Unfortunately, not all the world agrees with your philosophy on life. I'd gladly accept your assistance with my omission, though, that is, if you're still interested in helping? Jeffrey nodded, offering a handshake to seal the deal. Of course, I'm nothing if I'm not. I'm nothing if I'm not a man of my word. Wow, you know what would have been better than that? I'm nothing if not a man of my word. Instead of, I'm nothing if not. If I'm not a man of my word. Also, like, he seems, like, strangely not concerned with his possible son's death. Like, I would be a little bit more eager for, like, news about the prince. If that were my illeg illegitimate son. I don't know. That's just me. Amon reciprocated, and the two men set out together with a singular goal in mind. To be honest, sir, I've got no idea where to begin my search. I'm currently on my way to Azarad to try and coerce the Princess Elizabeth into aiding my mission. She's become a close friend to both Leopold and me over the last several years, and I'm certain she must be distraught at the very idea of his passing. Jeffrey, per Jeffrey perked up. A distraught princess, you say? Yes, sir. We were all born within a few months of one another, and we formed a tight bond. Not so close as mine and Leopold's, but it's worth including her in the search. You say you're the same age? How old are you exactly? Jeffrey asked, with a devious glint in his eye. Truth be told, he already knew the answer. So why is he asking and, like... We know he knows. Why Why did you have to tell us that as a writer? Did you think we forgot about Jeffrey? It's been three chapters since he did left. He knew exactly how long ago he had left the castle, and the, la the last time he had seen Annabeth's face, the last time he had kissed her. He knew how old his son was, but he couldn't let on. So he pretended to be ignorant, as he, and he did it well. Also, it's the prince, like... We have real princes here in the real world, in England, and, like, people know about them. They, like, know their lives. And in this, like, fictional world where the princes actually matter, like, politically, people would be aware of how old he is and all that shit. And, like... This is, this is real... 18, sir. Could do, could do, he said, giving it some consideration. Still basically children, though. That mostly puts the kibosh on my fun. Is Jeffrey considering hooking up with an 18-year-old? That's really creepy. Jeffrey looked mildly disappointed, only kind of a on a only kind of aware how inappropriate it would be to lust after one of his son's friends. That's a terrible sentence. Very well, less distraction, I suppose. How so? Never mind my ramblings. Off to find the princess, said Jeffrey, still craving some diversion from what which was really plaguing him. Wow, that was a good sentence. Craving some diversion from that... Nope, from what? Not that which was really plaguing him, which would make a grammatically sound sentence, but from what which was really plaguing him. 
He was conflicted over the information about Leopold. How was he meant to mourn the loss of a son he never knew? He had barely given the boy a second thought over the years, yet he could suddenly think of little else. Why are you mourning? You're on a quest to find him because you think he's alive. I... I... Also, where the fuck is this tower? Because the way it was written, it sounded like it was in the castle. It really did. Like, there was no real traveling. The guard took him and then kind of put him in a tower. Like, I assumed it was really close by. But apparently it could be, like, way out there. That's... That's some... That's some piss-poor writing, man. Piss-poor writing. That's the chapter, by the way. I'm also really hungry because I haven't eaten anything all fucking day. I'm gonna go make some food. Peace out!